Amen. And today I'm going to be speaking to, to fathers, but not necessarily and only to fathers, but to everybody. I want to speak to our society. I want to speak to the church. I want to speak to our nation. I want to speak to the broader culture of our society. And my thought is going to be weird. <laughs> I, I, I'll give you notice on that. But let me read my text first. Matthew chapter number 5. You find that say, I'm ready for the weird and the wonderful. Now I'm going to read Matthew 5, 13. Ye or you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost its savor or its flavor, its saltness, wherewith it is salted. The Bible said it is then forth good for nothing, but to be cast out and be trodden under the foot of men. You are the salt of the earth. I'd like to talk to you today on the thought now all the Jamaicans are going to go crazy. Salt man. <laughs> now hold on. I know you Jamaican folks. The pastor changed that title immediately because when someone says you're salt, you're bad luck. <laughs> well, I don't believe in luck, number one. Number two, that's not my premise. And for all the ladies who like to be salty, <laughs> aggressive and angry and emotionally explosive. I'm not going to talk about you. I have a different thought in mind and I'll hopefully contextualize that to bring a blessing to all of you today. Now, the text that I read from, and before I go there, I am not necessarily one I mean, to take my dictates from the, the social holidays to determine what message to preach. The strangest thing is, I, I had a thought prepared from the book of Esther for our men. And as I began to review it, my introductory thoughts became the message. And so I will pick up with that from Esther another day. But... That's where the thought really was germinated. That's where it was generated from. But we pick up this today at Matthew chapter 5 where Jesus was now launching his ministry and having done great miracles. His fame had spread across Galilee and the Decapolis and across Jerusalem and Judea beyond the Jordan and a great multitude were now following him. And Jesus, seeing that multitude, he went off to take a seat on the top of the mountain and he began to teach his disciples and begins with what we call, the, what we call here the Beatitude. Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7. Now, I consider the Beatitude or the message of the Beatitude that Jesus taught to be at the very top of what I would call any substantive teaching. It is the cream of the crop, creme de la creme of messages taught by any teacher that there may be in the world, past, present, and future. I believe the Beatitude stands as not only a Sermon on the Mount, but it was a sermon on the pinnacle, the paramount message on the mount of all of human declaration and inspiration. His speech is greater than that of the sages of old, greater than that of the laws of Moses. His speech is greater than all the wisdom of Solomon's articulation. Above the platitudes of all the Greek philosophies put together, Mohammed cannot hold a candle near to the message of Jesus because this message of Jesus stands on rival 
as the greatest message, the supreme message ever to be taught to men by God who became a man. And so this profound depth of and height of the beatitude is far above, amen, all of the messages and alone would be applied if were to be applied to our lives, if that message alone were to be applied to our lives in the earth, in our families, in our own personal individual lives, in our society, if we should aim to live out the first few verses of the Beatitude, then of course we would be most blessed in this life. Amen. We would be, we would live a life, amen, that's uncomparably blessed. But we read this and very often we don't apply it. For example, look at the blessing. Because we measure blessing by material things and prominence and amen. How many people serve us? But Jesus said it like this. Blessed are the poor in spirit, the humble in spirit. And then he went further. Blessed are they that mourn. Amen. Not arrogant, not proud. Amen. Not always seeking to be in the party uh, but blessed are those who carry a meek and broken spirit. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are they which hunger and thirst after righteousness, the merciful. Blessed are the pure in heart, the peacemakers. Blessed are they. Amen. Those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, blessed are they. Jesus gave in these few verses, amen, a recipe that could transform the ill of society, transform our lives, amen, just with one day of application. If this were to be, amen, the mode that we chose to operate by. And so applying the beatitude to our lives, amen, is to be infused, please hear me now, to apply these beatitudes to our lives is to be infused, amen, with the profound properties of what makes us salt. I'm not talking about the flavor in the crystals that seasons your meat and your salt shaker. No, I'm talking about having, amen, compressed in our personality, in our character, in our manhood, in our humanhood, these, amen, character traits. And if these elements be pressed into us, then that's where we would find the properties that would make us salt men, blessed men, because we are pure, poor in spirit, not arrogant and proud. We are, amen, men that are tender and broken before God. We are men that are meek in our dispositions, men who hungers and thirsts after righteousness. If these qualities and character traits be compressed within our own personalities, then that would immediately make us what verse 13 says, you are the salt of the earth. And so, ladies and gentlemen, amen, here we are identifying, amen, that we're not talking about salt in the bottle, but Jesus said salt is people. Amen. Salt are people. is people. You are the salt of the earth. Someone put it in the chat. I am the salt of the earth. Every daddy put that in the chat. I am the salt of the earth. Put it in the chat. I am a salt man. Hallelujah. Put that in the chat. Every daddy, I am a salt man. Amen. That's what Jesus said after the Beatitudes. The first thing he said was, you are the salt of the earth. Now, Jesus was not talking about actual salt. He was talking about people who embody the traits of the Beatitude. Amen. And the instructions of Christ in their lives. So the man who spends time with God, in the word of God, memorize the word, keep it in his heart, apply it to his living, then that man becomes a man, a salt man, a man whose life is filled with the flavor or the savor of salt. Amen. When we've got that in our lives, amen, Christian instructions, amen, we will begin to treat others and our families in a way 
way that is different from the way the world is handling manhood or man has been handling manhood. Salt, a man serves a purpose. So let me bring this down to you before we go further in the message. Share some of the background. Very little, I won't be, amen, dwelling there long, but three or four little points I want to make here. When we're talking about salt, men, salt represents influence. And so the character of a man of God should be a man that's present and have weight in his own home. A man of influence, not because you are the boss, the bully, the top of the rank, but a man that, that is filled with mercy and amen, a poor spirit and mourn and meek and merciful and peacemaking and can take a hit and some persecution and still have joy in his heart and so salt a man a man will have these lit literal expressions in their lives salt makes food pleasant and palatable Therefore, a salt man at home will make home pleasant and children and wife will want to be at home. Amen. When, when food is palatable, it tastes good. A salt man makes home, feels good for children to come home to. A salt man represents Christ and make him taste palatable to others. Salt preserves and protects from decay and putrefaction, which means a salt man will guard his home from immoral, amen, overtaking and corruption invading and taking over his home and his children. A salt man will watch what his children, amen, is consuming on the internet. A salt man will watch what's going on with the music and the fashion in his home. A salt man is one that will protect the convictions he holds dear and prevent them from becoming deteriorated and decayed by the putrefaction of an immoral society. A salt man amen is like salt promotes thirst and creates desire and so this man because this man loves God his children will say I want to be like my daddy because daddy tastes good in my mouth. When I say daddy amen it makes me feel like here is an example I want to live up to. So when I speak of this ladies and gentlemen Christian fathers are to be therefore we should agree that all Christian people should be salt people. But I'm talking to daddies today. So all Christian fathers should be salt men in their families. You should be a salt man on the job. A salt man when you drive on the highway. Keeping your family from the corrupting influence. A salt man bringing the blessing and the power of influence of God's presence. To bear in your home. To bear on your sons. And to bear on your daughter. Amen. Our daughters. Amen. Because of your prayer and your consistent example and character trait will bring on in your home a sense of the glory of God. You are a warrior of salt, man. You fight the devil on the front door and the back door. You are one who protects your family from putrefaction. You don't just lay down and watch TV and flip the channel. You got something to say because there's something worth fighting for. Because if the strong man sees a man come in his house, the stronger man must bind that man and say, you're not in my house house not with my children so watch what's going on brothers and sisters and wives give the man a chance to be a man he don't have to be a bully but why sit down for a while and let the man be a man Oh, glory to God. You're wondering why your man won't take the position of being a salt man. You're too nagging and too miserable. And the Bible says a miserable, nagging wife like a dripping tap. And the man's going to be like, want to be like a spider. He don't, go to, he don't want to talk to you. He don't want to come home to you because you're too miserable. Woo. Come on, somebody say, Pastor is messing, messing up. Come on, somebody put, yes, yeah, the Pastor is really getting crazy on us today. Woo. I know nobody want to touch that subject because everybody's scared to death. But I, you know the word is the word. So, so give the men a chance to protect the family and have a voice. And support the man because that's honorable. I hear a lot of people talk about, oh, the best way for, you know, a child to honor their mother is, for, is to observe the way daddy treats mommy. Well, I'm telling you, the best way for a child to honor their father is to watch the way mommy treats daddy. I thought I'd have gotten an amen from a few men around here. <laughs> the wives ain't going to say nothing now, but the men ought to say amen. 
I hope you're not that henpecked that you're scared to say amen at home. Oh my, it's rough, isn't it? It's going to get better. <laughs> God help us. It's going to get better. But someone's praying for me, and so I got the boldness and the liberty to deliver my heart. Ladies and gentlemen, amen, your life must make Christianity as a man, as a salt man, your life must make Christianity pleasant for your children and for your community, your character, your behavior, your conduct, your integrity, your ethics, amen, must serve to preserve and pass on the highest standards of Christianity. Don't leave a bad taste in your children's mouth because you've lost your savor. The man of God that I'm talking about is a man whose character will both preserve what was handed down to him as a heritage and pass it on as a legacy to the next generation. Come on now. Every man in the chat must make up your mind. What I receive from my fathers won't die with me. My children is going to be a praiser. My children will know how to pray. My children will know how to give and tithe and respect a woman. My children will know how to honor their husband because I'm going to make sure what was given to me is passed down because salt preserves and salt passes down that flavor amen to others your life must not cause your children or your family or your community to repudiate the church and repudiate Christianity and say if that's the way Christians are like my daddy I don't want to have nothing no your life is to make them say I want to be like my daddy because my daddy is a reflection of his daddy come on now somebody give God a praise sons ought to be like your daddy as many as received him to then give you power amen to become the sons of God and you ought to be like your daddy look like your father act like your father pray like your father praise like your father love like your father come on every man I'm talking you're a sword man if you can do that your life must create a desire in others to want to serve your Jesus and come to your church and emulate you They'd look at you and say, man, you're so different. I want to be like you because salt is affecting and creating desire in those around you. You are the salt of the earth. Did you hear that? You're not just a salt man, but your influence is large. Woo, that's big. You are the salt of the earth. Every man that is a salt man is a significant contributor to the preservation of our earthly society having any form of godliness or good in it. You are the salt of the earth. You are salt men and you are critically needed in the earth and in your home and in your family despite what the feminist may say. Oh yeah, I'm not rushing this. I'm letting it marinate. And I'm looking for the amens. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, a salt man is vital to the survival of the family and the quality of life in our world and our economy and the welfare of our society by being the man God calls him to be and you are critical. Everybody put that in the chat. My daddy is critical to my success. Come on, wives, put that in the chat. My husband or children, your father is, crit is critical to your success. You are critical to the success of your neighborhood and your community. You are the salt of the earth and it doesn't matter what the world may say. It doesn't matter what the feminists may say. It doesn't doesn't matter what other people may say you are critical to the earth more the more and, and and hear this now the more we subtract salt from the earth the more we subtract salt men from the earth the more we subtract salt from the earth is the more
more we lose flavor in the earth, the more we lose flavor in our society, the more godly men are withdrawn from society, the more godly men are withdrawn from family, it's the worst families are going to be, and the more corrupt society will become, the music will become coarser and curse coarser, the children will begin to act weirder and weirder, they will dress worse and worse, they will act more like the devil than ever before, because when salt loses its savor, everything goes wrong, we need salt men at home, we need... I wish I had a hundred men in the church with me today, but we need some on the, on the chat. Raise your hand, brothers, because God is trying to get a message to you that you are critical, you are important, you are valuable, you are needed. Earth needs you, families need you, society needs you. You're a salt man, and God says, stay salty. Don't lose your flavor. Woo, how am I doing so far? Am I redeeming myself a little bit? The more salt loses its flavor in our lives, the more men became, become less and less godly. The more men become less manly and righteous. The more, the more godly men and fathers are removed from families. As a matter of fact, the more fathers are removed from families, whether they're godly men or not, and I'm not justifying abusive men, men's behavior, but I'm talking in a general sense that the more men are removed from the family, the more decay comes to the family, to our children, and the more indecency, amen, and corruption will invade our children. That's why we need men at home. That's why we need men who will pray with their families, that's why we need men who will say, come on, let's go to church. That's why we need men who will have a voice or a presence at home. Amen. Because you are salt. And salt protects from decay. Salt preserves for the next generation. Salt promotes desire for people to desire good. So who are salt men? Well, Jesus made the statement, amen, in one of the scriptures that I'm going to look at in a little while. Jesus said salt is good. And the word good means honest. It means valuable, virtuous, or worthy. So a salt man, therefore, is a good man. Yes, Brother Stefan, you are a good man. Oh, Brother Sam, you are a good man. Brother David Kerr, a good man. Brother Richard Patterson, you're a good man. Amen. All you fathers, Brother Mark Rowe, amen. Good man. Amen. I want to say this to all the daddies out there. You are a good man. If you're at home with your wife and your children, I don't say for things that are perfect, but good men are men, amen, that makes a difference. Salt men, yes, brothers and sisters, salt men are men, amen, who are good fathers in their character, men who take responsibility to make a difference at home. To be a good man is to be a good influencer at home and to leave a legacy in the earth. Let's catch what Jesus would really mean. Proverbs chapter 13, 22 said it like this A good man, catch this now, catch this, you can't lose this. A good man, Proverbs 13 and 22. A good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. You, got, you, you missed it. Because all you're seeing is a man leaving money and house for his children. No. What it's simply saying is a good man has multi-generational influence because salt influence Brother Stephan. When a when there's a good man, you just don't live and die and everybody. No. When you're a good man, your influence will affect your children and your children's children. They're going to say, Grandpa was a praiser. That's why we read very often about Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Because Abraham was a salt man and Jacob God and Jacob was a salt man and he passed it on down to the 12 tribes everybody hear me today a good man leaves something of praise a good man leaves something with your children more than money more than a few amen, piece of jewelry a good man leaves a multi-generational inheritance to love the Lord to praise the Lord to walk like a man to talk like a man to live like a man to respect women like a man to praise God like a man oh that men would lift holy hands 
everywhere. Salt men are praising men. Salt men are influential men. Salt men will affect your generations. Because salt preserves and passes on. Jesus said in Mark chapter 9 and 50. Can we walk through this? We're going to do a little bit of walking and talk, walk and talk for a little while. Matthew, the, Mark the ninth chapter, the 50th verse, the Bible says, salt is good. And a good man leaves an inheritance. So a salt man is a good man that leaves an inheritance. But if the salt loses its saltness, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth, Jesus said, good for nothing. So in order to preserve families and men from becoming good for nothing, Jesus said, have salt in yourself. Everybody, have salt in yourself. Every man needs salt in himself. And have peace with one another. Ladies and gentlemen, why is it so important that fathers have salt in themselves? Because you need salt in yourself to pass it on to your sons and your daughter. If you don't have it, you're good for nothing. Hello? Are you hearing me, young man? You're going to become daddies one of these days. Get it from now. If you don't have salt in you, I don't care whether you're handsome, good-looking, make a lot of money, famous, play well. If you don't have salt inside of you, you're good for nothing. So have salt in yourself. Get money, but get salt. Yeah, yeah, work with me on this. Get a job, but get... Get married, but get... Whatever you do, make sure you have salt in yourself. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, why? Because you are critical to pass it on to the next generation. In the, God, in the, in the book of Numbers chapter 18 and verse number 19, here is a profound insight carrying on the thought. You need salt in yourself because it's got to be passed on down the line to the father, to the next generation. All the heave offerings of the holy things which the children of Israel offer unto the Lord have I given unto you the priest and to your sons and to your daughters with you all of the offerings that they offer I give to you the priest your sons and your daughters how did I give it to you by a statute forever what is a statute forever it is a covenant of salt forever before the Lord so what the Lord is saying is when I bring you into the place of you becoming a priest I give you all of the, the, the offerings that's brought, but it's not only for you to eat and drink and be happy with your sons and your daughters. It is a covenant of salt, which is a forever covenant. So the idea is salt represents continuity. Salt represents a multiplication or I mean, eternal values being transmitted. So brothers and sisters, I want to make you to understand today that what, I mean, what's in you I mean, is to be transmitted to your children so before you can pass it on have salt in yourself before you can teach your children to pray learn to pray for yourself before you can teach your children to give learn to give yourself before you can teach your children to worship learn to worship yourself have salt within yourself because salt represents generational eternal covenant that's transmitted from the father down to the children if all the characteristics of salt were to be summed up into two words it would be difference maker if all the characteristics of salt when we press together it should, would make two words uh, amen the meaning uh, difference maker wherever salt is uh, it makes a difference uh, and I want to let you know uh, every daddy uh, is a difference maker and every home uh, needs uh, the daddy difference uh, salt men uh, are men would make the daddy difference uh, at home you've changed lives uh, you let your daughters know what love is uh, and your sons what respect is uh, every good man uh, that's a salt man uh, you are daddy influencer you are daddy influence maker 
You make a difference. A salt makes a difference in everything. So are salt men. So don't lose your salt, daddy. Don't lose your joy, daddy. Don't lose your praise. Don't lose your worship. Don't lose your worthiness. Don't lose your walking right. Don't lose your admiration. Learn to walk right. Have salt in yourself. Let no man make you lose your flavor. Let no woman make you lose your salt. You are an influencer. They may not tell you so. They may call you deadbeat, a sperm donor. But I'm here to tell you, you are daddy. You make a difference. And daddy difference changes the trajectory of children. You are needed at home. You are needed in your family. What does it mean? And how does salt lose its savor? If salt is so critical, I'm going to talk to us for a little while. If salt loses its savor, and thenceforth is good for nothing, and we need to protect against that, then we need to find out what do we need to do to not lose our saltness. Well, the Greek word in Matthew 5 that describes the, st the st statement have lost its savor. If the salt have, have lost its savor, the Greek word for have lost its savor is, you're not going to be, I hope you're not shocked by this. The Greek word is morono, from which we get the English moron. So when daddy start acting like a moron, you start losing salt. When you marry Mary and start running around with Mary Ann, you're losing salt. When you work for the dollar bill that you get and gamble it away and don't bring home gross for the children, you're losing salt, brother. When, when, when you drink yourself to, to, to being smashed and inebriated and scream at your children and hit your wife. Uh, you are making a fool of yourself. Uh, you are not a salt man. Uh, you are good for... Oh. You want me to preach it? Yeah, that's what Jesus said. If you lose your salt, uh, uh, you're good for nothing. And, uh, but that's not who I'm talking about today. I'm only warning you not to be a moron. I'm only warning you not to be a man who makes a fool of yourself. I'm only, only warning you to not become silly. That's what it means to become silly and insipid and become a simpleton. You're not reasoning on things anymore. So salt men are needed in the home. So don't lose your saltiness. Let me show you what the Bible says about a man losing his salt. Romans chapter 1, 21, 22. Oh, I, I'm doing some teaching as I go into this. Jesus, uh, Paul begins to talk to the Roman church. He said this, because when they knew God, <laughs> they glorified him not as, I feel happy about this already. When they knew God, they glorified him not as God. So every man that knows God is to learn to glorify God. To know God is to serve God. To know God is to love God. To know God is to raise your hand. Am I doing okay so far? To know God is to be a worshiper. Because when they knew God, what the problem was, they glorified him not as God. They tr start treating God like God is not worthy. And we got more men coming to church, sitting down like a bump on a pickle. Amen. Never raise your hand and wonder why their children are on drugs. I want to tell you when you knew God. They did not glorify God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their own imagination as though they are doing a favor to God and become foolish. Their foolish heart was darkened. Look what the verse said now. And professing themselves to be wise, they became morons. That the same way a man loses his salt. When a man don't praise God, when a man refuses to worship God. Can I preach a little bit right now? I want to tell every man you ought to be a worshiper. At home lift your hand. At home sing the praise. Come on brothers. You are more than the man in the bedroom. Uh, learn to worship God uh, in, your, in your living room. Uh, bend down on your knees. Uh, cry out to God. Uh, lay hands on your children. Uh, believe God uh, for you are a salt man. Uh, and if you stop doing that, uh, you're going to lose your salt. Uh, but don't lose your salt. Uh, don't lose your savor. Uh, the world needs you. Uh, the earth needs you. Uh, your children need you. Uh, so keep praying. Uh, I said keep praising. Uh, keep lifting up Jesus. Uh, you're a salt man. Uh, you're a daddy difference maker. Daddy difference makes all the difference. Don't lose your savor. Don't lose your worship. Don't lose your anointing. 
Don't lose your peacemaking spirit. So I say to daddies today, have salt in yourself. Know God. <laughs> Glorify God. Thank God. Praise God. You are valuable. Father's Day is a day to remind daddy you're important to the success of your children. Now let me slow it down one more time because I want to take off but but, but I, I got to get some teaching in your hearts because this is a chronic issue I'm dealing with. Father's Day is a time where we generally turn the spotlights on fathers to honor them. You know, the word honor means to esteem them, to show respect unto them, to admire them, to, to appreciate them, to give them some credit. Come on, give your dad, everybody. I'm going to ask every son, every daughter today, as long as your daddy's alive, find a way to give him some credit. I don't care if he's living with another woman. I said, I don't care if he's got six babies apart from yours, you being with another mother. Give your daddy some credit today. Esteem him a little bit. He must have done something right. That's why you're here for God's sake. Shower him with a little bit of praise. Show him some honor. You know one thing I find about Christianity is we don't know honor. We don't know how to honor people. A man can labor all his life and you know, oh, we're going to honor the pastor today and you bring, you bring, you bring, you bring a box of chocolate. You're trying to kill me. That's not honoring. It seems like the world knows how to honor people better than the church. The Grammys know how to honor their superstar better than Christian people know how to honor their pastors and their dads and their... I mean, I, I, I look at this man. Haman, Haman, the wicked Haman knew how to honor better than it seemed like Many Christians know. Amon walked into the king's court one day after the king had read about Mordecai saving his life. And the king said, it was in my heart to honor the man and show him dignity that saved my life. What has been done for him? And nothing was done for the man. The king said, I need to show honor to this man. And at that, that, that time, Haman, the wicked, walked into the king's court. And the king called Haman and said, Haman, what shall I do to honor the man that the king delights to honor? And Haman thought, oh, to honor? Let me tell you how you honor a man. Get one of the king's robe <laughs> that the king wears. Get the king's crown. Hmm, that's going big, man. That the king wears. Get the king's horse that he rides upon. And give that wardrobe to someone to put it upon the man that the king chooses to honor. And then when the man gets on the horse, dress in the robe with a crown on his head, have somebody draw drive him through town saying this is the way the king honors a man i want to let you know brothers and sisters a tie is good and a tie clip is good and a, and a, and a, and a, and a, and a cuff link is good and screwdrivers are good but for god's sake man get a limousine and rent that thing out and buy the man a new suit and drive him around town and say this is my daddy let everybody know that this is my daddy learn to honor amen your father i know amen things are tough but brothers and sisters i'm only showing you that that's the way men amen were honored preachers today amen tear down fathers unfortunately father's day is the worst holiday to go to church it seems because preachers tear down daddies amen you're no good and they preach about the deadbeats and the sperm donors and the runaway father and the yeah, yeah, yeah. presidents speak badly about amen fathers negative fathers amen women and feminists tear down and demean fathers children ignore their daddies the courts are against your daddies and statistics are screaming at us Statistic is screaming at us. Science screaming at us. Psychology screaming at us. The Bible screaming at us. The daddies are critical to the success of the family. We have joined the bandwagon of tearing down men when science and statistics and psychology and the Bible and this preacher today is screaming out to our indifferent, tone-deaf society 
telling you that the deplorable decay of society has undeniable link to the absence of daddy. Oh my God. Ladies and gentlemen, homes need fathers. Children need fathers. Society needs daddies because they are the salt in the family. Catch this. Cornell University professor Eurus von Fenbenner, one of the most uh, uh, eminent developmental psychologists, said this, quote, children growing up in father-absent households are at greater risk for experiencing behavioral and educational problems, getting into crime early, drop out of school, smoking, drinking, early sexual activity, drugs, suicide, and violence. Why? Because the absence of the daddy difference. Oh, when salt isn't in the home, it affects children and their destiny. Just like the priest with the salt affects multi-generational, amen, blessing. When salt is not absent, there's no inheritance. When salt is absent, there's no inheritance for children's children. And they become depressed and psycho psychologically impaired and intellectually pigmented. They, 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 they're, they're dwarfed in their spirit and they become drinkers and drunkards and drug pushers because they're searching for something that's missing. What are they searching for? Salt. They need salt. They need your daddies. It is noted, it is noted in one of the reports, quote, that father deprivation is largely a pre, amen, a pre perpetrator and a predictor of criminal activities in children more than race, environment, and poverty, which means a man can grow up in a poor neighborhood with his daddy and become something bigger. But a man in the White House without your daddy is in danger of becoming a bummer. Brothers and sisters, I want to tell you something. The daddy difference is salt in the earth. The daddy difference prevents the decay. The daddy difference prevents the putrefaction. What's wrong with our society today? What's wrong is we need a bring back uh, daddies in the home. Uh, when daddies are not at home, uh, things go terribly wrong. Uh, when salt loses savor, children suffer uh, the consequences. When daddies are not present, uh, influence uh, is gone uh, and someone will fill the, fill the gap. Uh, rock rap music or some kind of thing drugs will fill the gap but I'm here today and I counsel amen with men who are struggling I counsel with men over and over who are saying pastor I need a way to know how to father my children we need to get back the daddy difference not all fathers are struggling or bad men some fathers who are struggling they don't know how to father One of the saddest memories I can recollect had a gentleman in the office way in his mid-50s. He was making a terrible mess of life. Had a good wife, good family, beautiful home. He was making all kind of crazy mistakes. So he came to talk to me one day and we began to talk. And I said, man, wh what's propelling you to make these Decisions that's so self-destructive and destructive to your relationship. And I watched this big 50-plus-year-old man broke down in tears. He said, Pastor, I'm trying my best, but I've never seen a daddy's influence in my life. So I'm walking a journey that I've never seen a footprint. And I thought, oh God, this is not a man to be beaten down. That's a man to be commended. This man is saying, I've never seen anybody do it before, but I'm trying to do it. I didn't get it, but I'm trying to give it. That's what I call a salt man. They're not perfect men, but they're men who say it wasn't done to me, but I'm going to try. I may make a few mistakes. I may stumble here and there, but I'm going to try. When salt loses its savor, it affects the next generation. So what we need are old men to teach a young man. We need a fathers to show the young boys. Because when fathers begin to show the young boys, you begin to break the curse. You're going to bring back salt. And when the salt gets in the house, things will change. I'm preaching today to some salt men. There's some good men in the church. Let your children know how to love God. Let your sons know how to pray. Let your sons know how to love a woman. Teach them well. Because when you put salt in them, you break generational curse. It's going to change. And I'm here to tell some 
someone today, they're sought about to turn things around. There's some good men out there who are going to get this message today. There's some wives who are going to hear this today and turn your support and honor their fathers, honor their husbands, honor your, your male. It's going to change the trajectory of life. We need sought men. We need sought men. Yeah. We need sought men. Yeah. Hey, 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 hey. One more time. We need sought men. Whoa, we need the daddy difference. We need the actual daddy at home. Because when daddies are at home, it makes life better. But when daddies are not at home, things go wrong. Children get rotten. Relationships spoil. Decay will set in. And we're going to push back the decay. Push back the curse. Push back suicide. Push back dropout. Push back teenage pregnancy. Push back lesbianism. Push back gayism. Because daddies are critical to the success of the next generation. We need salt men. Hey, I feel it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Hold on, I'm getting way too happy. Let me tell you why we need salt men. I'm going to quote again the statistics about father-deprived homes. When fathers are not present, things go terribly wrong. 72% of teenagers who are murderers are from fatherless homes. That, that's serious, Brother Stefan. Psychologist says... The biggest predictor of the outcome of a child is based upon whether or not their father is in their life or not. So when, 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 when we use divorce to settle conflicts, what are we doing to our children? Hey, answer me, answer me, talk back to me. Did you hear? No, you didn't hear. I said, when we use divorce to settle conflicts, what? are we doing to our children we are removing salt we're setting them up to fail 72 percent of all teenagers in fatherless homes counted as murderers 60 percent of rapists fatherless home 70 percent incarcerated kids fatherless home twice as likely to drop out of school fatherless home 11, 11 times more likely to be violent, fatherless homes. Three out of four su teen suicide, fatherless home. 80% of adults and in psychiatric hospitals, fatherless home. 90% of runaway children, fatherless home. 75% more likely to, be, to suffer from poverty, fatherless home. Teenage pregnancy, boys repeating the pattern of abuse and going to perpetuate the same thing, fatherless home. As if our nation is absolutely tone deaf and oblivious to what I'm saying why do they still continue to rip daddies away from home every chance they get the Canadian system I should have brought this down to show you but the Canadian court system shows the statistics 15% of children after divorce or separation only 15% only 15% are assigned to fathers only 15%. No, we say fathers are the most critical thing to the success and outcome of our children. Why do we have only, the math doesn't add up. The courts, to settle divorce and separation, gives only 15% of children to the fathers. 9% goes to equal sharing of co-visitation. 6% goes into other places, whether it's other family or homes. 70% goes to mother-only homes. When daddy is absent, 72% are accounted of as murderers. And we're still putting 70% away from daddies. We're trying to perpetuate murder and suicide and run away and failure. Why? Because when the salt is absent, 
When the sword is absent, everything goes wrong. We need to bring back daddies. We need to bring back fathers. We need fathers in the home. We need a regulation, a real regulation of our justice system. We need to transform our government. We need a change. The American Psychological Association in corporate said it like this, father love is more important than mother love, quote unquote. Why then do we put 70% of children and their mother alone and deprive them of their fathers? Father love is, is a sole predictor of specific outcome, quote unquote. Why then do we have 70% of children away from their fathers stuck with their mothers alone? And yes, I know you're going to say, oh, they're deadbeat, all that. I want to tell you something, folks. This is not a sign of just deadbeatism. It's a sign of a broken society that don't believe in fixing problems. And so these negative statistics should not mean, doesn't mean I'm bashing fathers. By no means. What I'm trying to do is point out the fact that it's a sign to show how valuable fathers are. And when salt is removed, things go terribly wrong. Healthy families are compromised. Children's destinies are spoiled. Society is under pressure. Health of our future is literally, amen, stagnated. And so when salt is removed from the equation, everything goes wrong. And so I'm not here advocating, amen, deadbeat dads. No, I'm not advocating, amen, the guiltiness of mismanagement of men and abuse of manhood. No, but what I'm saying is this. Feminism does not have to tear down men and the court system doesn't have to tear down men at the cost of destroying children let's find justice the daddy difference must become a central column in conflict resolution both in the court system and in our own sense of understanding I'm not asking you to honor unworthy behaviors of men but what I'm saying is this men must honor themselves and walk with salt in themselves fathers must recognize how valuable they are and whether you're married, divorced, or separated, or remarried, you need to understand that you are, if you've got kids, you've got a severe, you've got a great obligation. So live up to your significance. Let your children see that you care. Live out to your identity as salt of the earth. You don't have to be educated to do that. You don't have to be wealthy to do that. You don't have to be a perfect man to do that. As a matter of fact, Abraham wasn't perfect. Isaac wasn't perfect. Amen. Jacob wasn't perfect. David was far from perfect. But they all were men of, of integrity or men of salt or men of difference. Why? Because they all leave something of God for the next generation. So I want to remind wives, mothers, children, stepchildren, adopted children. Honor your father. Because what I've discovered is this. Many of the men who are fighting now to father are men who were never fathered. Many of the men who are fighting now to father you, son, who are mouthing off on your daddy because he's never there for the ball game because he's on the job trying to bust his skin to pay the rent. Many of the men who are trying to father never had a mentor, never had a model. And so they are fathering through baggage. These are men who are fathering, dragging a lot of rejection. These are men fathering now, lacking approval of their own daddies. These are fathers who are imperfect men because they themselves were fatherless. And we read the scripture like this, the Lord is a father to the fatherless because we hate the daddy and look at the children. But the daddy was also a child who was fathers. And God is saying, Daddy, I am a father to you. I know you don't know what you're doing, but it's not just about the children. I'm concerned about the daddy because if I heal the daddy, I can heal the children. If daddy gets right up, children can get right up. So if you really want to honor your father, if you really want to see your daddy do well, start praising your daddy. Start honoring your daddy because when God made men, he made men in his own image. And the more you praise God, the more you magnify him. And 
Stand the more you will give a man a praise. Tell your daddy how good he is. He may not be the best man, but stand up and say, Daddy, I love you. Your daddy may need your approval more than you need his. So start saying, Daddy, I honor you. My daddy didn't give me everything I needed when I was growing up, but my daddy was a good man. My daddy wasn't a perfect man when I was growing up, but my daddy was a good man. He was there when I needed him. He was a talkative man, but his presence carried weight. And I'm saying to you, your daddy may not have to go to everything you do and say everything you want to say, but if a man is there, say, Daddy, thank you for being there. Oh, because you make a difference. When I was growing up, my daddy didn't say very much. I see my sister on the line, Cheryl, God bless you. When I was growing up, my daddy was extremely quiet. But my God, he had presence, Brother Sam. He was a salt man. He could be in the house, just sitting down, saying not a word. And we knew where to talk with our indoor voice. I mean, he didn't have to say a word. No, some of you women want to feminize your men, make the men talk like they're... Don't try to make the man a sister. My daddy was a hard worker. I learned hard work from him. He was a generous man. He, I, I remember him giving me, giving me things without me asking him. He was a man that showed me how to work hard. And I want to say to all of you daddies out there today, if your family don't honor you, I stand to salute you. I stand to say, Daddy, you're a salt man. You make a difference. You make the daddy difference. Come on, daddy. Pull up your shoes. Make up your mind. If your children have hated you for a long time, today call them and say, I'm sorry for the way I've treated you, but I'm your daddy and I love you. I want to say this today to all the daddies who stayed, to all the daddies who prayed, to all the daddies who changed diapers, to all the daddies who rocked the baby with the colic at night to sleep, to all the daddies who cooked the meal, to all the daddies who washed the dishes, to all the daddies who cleaned the house, and to all the daddies who did the laundry, to all the daddies who cut the grass to all the daddies who went to the ball game to all the daddies who went to the recital to all the daddies who laughed at silly jokes to all the daddies who wrestled with your son to all the daddies who hugged your daughters and kissed them to all the daddies who helped with the homework to all the daddies who prayed to all the daddies who apologized when they were wrong wherever you are in prison in the hospital in another lover's arm I want to say you're a sword man and I honor you today you have given me some things you need to get right but you are valuable Daddy, you're a sword man. You're a difference maker. Your children need you. Society needs you. You don't have to be perfect, Daddy. But don't lose your savor. Come on, don't lose your flavor. Call your child. Hello, girl, how are you? Who, who is this? On, it's your daddy. Dad, you didn't talk to me for five years. I know, but I'm making it up today. I'm high, Yakosha. I'm break. I told you. He said they were gonna break the curse. We're breaking the curse today. I know your mama told you he was a no good son of something or another. But if daddy's calling you, say, Daddy, I know you did me wrong, but I forgive you. Start right where you are. Get back some salt in your life. Did you hear what I say, girl? Get back some salt in your life. Did you hear what I say, boy? Get back some salt in your life. Your daddy may be in prison, but call him and say, Daddy, I know you did wrong, but I want to make it up because I need salt in my life. And I want you to know how valuable you are. Brothers and sisters, if the man is no good, try to make him good. He's a, you've got a father that knows that none of us were any good. I wasn't perfect. My daddy wasn't perfect. Abraham wasn't perfect. Isaac wasn't perfect. Jacob wasn't perfect. Judah wasn't perfect. Benjamin wasn't perfect. But there's one perfect one. Father of creation. Father of the spirit of all flesh. Our father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name. He's our father. I call him Abba. Father. Now let every man that is broken run to the arms of Jesus. If you lost your salt, he can put salt in your life again. The sword can get back its savor come on daddy you can be reconciled you can be restored you can be renewed you can be revived your family can be strengthened again 
I'm almost through. Time is almost over. Well, it's past, but I'm almost through. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to let you know you may have made all kind of mess of yourself, but he's a perfect father. And if I'd be remiss today to close and I'll tell you about him because he is a father to the fatherless, the fatherless daddy and the fatherless children. And he wants to save you. Uh, hallelujah. He want to heal your family. He want to bring back the daddy connection. He want to he want to restore the years that regrets and canker worm and loneliness and poor self-image and shame is stolen from you. Because a lot of times when daddy leaves, children think maybe it's because of me. Maybe daddy didn't like me. No, daddy was having a lot of problem with himself and with mommy. And you are living out the pain of what you couldn't control. But today is a healing day. God showed me this to tell you today. And I want to close with this. That this is a day of renewal. Come on, someone put in the chat. Renewal, renewal. It's a day of restoration. Come on, put that in the chat. It's a day of reconciliation. A day where salt will heal broken relational situation. The Bible tells us in the book of 2 Kings chapter number 2 verse number 19. The Bible said, and the men of the city of Jericho came to Elisha. The men took the initiative and came to the prophet. And they said, Elisha, look what's going on here. The situation, the situation of the city is pleasant. In other words, the city looks good. Like many families, they look good on the outside. I've seen wives beaten by husbands. And they put on makeup to cover bruises and hold hands like everything was good. No, I ain't justifying that kind of slackness. Call for the prophet and say, Pastor, we're putting on a good pretentious show when we come to church. But we're struggling at home, man. That's what the men did. Real men recognize when there's a problem. And they don't camouflage and pretend and cover it up going on like everything. No, men were having problems and we need help, prophetic help, divine help, God's help. We look good on the outside. Drive a nice car, nice home, but oh, salt. So what, what's the situation? Look good, but, but he said, you know, you see us looking good on the outside, but, but the water is bad and the ground is barren. Looks good, but everything is rotten and bad on the, on the inside. Nothing is, nothing is productive. Relationship isn't growing. Things are terrible. No, we, 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 we've, got, we've, got, we've got problems that eating away our joy and our peace. Look good, but we're not happy. So what do we need? Everybody say, you need salt. Come on, what do you need? Not a divorce. You need salt. What do you need? Not another woman. You need salt. I I'm still going here. I'm still strong at it. Yeah, what do you need? You don't need to change your hairstyle. You need. You don't need another woman. You need. You don't need another man. You need. When, when the situation looks good on the outside and it's bad on the inside, you don't need to change your, 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 your home and get it more. No, you need salt. So the Bible said in verse number 20, he said unto them, them when he saw there was a problem, a deep problem, he said, bring me a new vessel. Oh, please underline that. Uh, and bring me salt uh, in the vessel. Uh, and amen. But when he got the salt in the vessel, he went forth to the spring uh, of the water. Uh, and he poured the salt uh, in the spring uh, of the water. Uh, because the water was bad. Uh, life was bad. And he poured the salt uh, in the head of the water. Uh, amen. Uh, from a new vessel. Uh, and then he said, Thus said the Lord, uh, I have healed the waters today. It shall from henceforth uh, be no more barren. Uh, what I'd like to tell you today is this, uh, that the new vessel uh, is Jesus Christ. Uh, amen. The one uh, who comes down from heaven, um, the perfect one. Um, and the salt in Jesus is the Holy Spirit. Uh, and what the prophet is saying is, uh, when you get the pro have a problem, uh, call Jesus uh, and get the Holy Spirit uh, to influence your water. Because your water is a type of your life. Uh, and where should the salt go? Uh, in the head of the spring. Um, it should go in the man first. Uh, but the man's the head of the woman. Uh, when you get the man sal salted, uh, when you get the man anointed, uh, it will change the water. And I'm here to tell you today, everybody, uh, this is a day uh, 
area of healing because when the, when the salt gets in the water the water was healed from that day forth so can I preach to somebody and tell you today get Jesus in your life get the salt in your life get the Holy Spirit in your life it will change the issues of life but out of the heart are the issues of life but when salt comes in he will change you he will change your life he will change your temper he will give you the beatitude you can transform your pain and you can become a salt man a difference maker relationships can be healed today so come on everybody get ready for healing in your home fathers will love children children embrace your daddy things are going to change because today salt is coming in your vessel would you lift your hands at home every man raise your hand every wife raise your hand every son and daughter raise your hand it's a day when I'm going to pour in salt I sprinkle the anointing I pour in the blood of Jesus I pour in deliverance I pour in miracles I pour breakthrough I pray the curse and I command the blessing upon every man every child every son every daughter Simple folks. Daddy, the most profound thing you can do right now is to make up your mind and say, I'm going to connect with my children. If you're an adopted daddy, put your arms around those kids. If you've got stepkids, treat them like your own. If you're separated from your children, to them, I want, I, want to, I want to rebuild the bridge. All it calls for are two things. Time and a relationship. See, what I've discovered is this. You don't need a degree to be a good daddy. Just take some time. It's all, Brother Stefan. Busy as you are. When you go home, just take some time. That means words to these children. It has eternal impression. Because what I've discovered is this. Children are impressionable. And what daddy demonstrates, children replicate. What daddy models, children mirror. When daddy invests, children will live on the interest. Fathers demonstrate, children imitate. This is most profound. When we read John 5, where Jesus said, Verily, verily, I said to you, the son can do nothing of himself. Boys can't figure it out by themselves. They may have biceps and triceps and can press more weight than you, but they can't figure it out by themselves. Jesus said the son can do, Jesus could do nothing by himself, but what he sees the fathers do. So I'm letting you know, if Jesus, the son of God, had to have to look at his daddy to know what to do. How about you and I? We need our daddies. The daddy difference will tell us how to live. The daddy, oh, he shows me. He will show you greater works than these. Verse 21, Bible tells us in verse, is that 19, 20? Amen, the Bible says, yes, the father, he will show you greater things than you've ever seen. In other words, you don't know what to do by yourself, but your daddy will show you. You don't know how to treat a woman, your daddy will show you. You don't know how to pray, your daddy will show you. You don't know how to love, your daddy will show you. So I'm saying to you right now, sons, look to your father. And if your daddy's not there, look to your heavenly father. Your heavenly father, he loves you. He's your heavenly father. Come to him for the father. For the father loves the son and showeth him all things. For the father loves the son and showeth him all things. For the father loves the son and showeth him all things. If you love your child, you're going to show him how to walk. If you love your child, you're going to show them how to talk. You're a salt man. You're a salt man. You're a man of influence. That's powerful influence. That's life changing influence. That's world changing influence. It's the Daddy difference.
the glory of children or their fathers, the Bible said in Proverbs chapter number 17 and 6. Stand where you are at home. The glory of children are their fathers. You need your daddy. Society needs fathers. Nobody should feel badly today because we're discovering the answer. It's going to call for some humility though. Where some of you are going to have to get down on your knees and say, God, I'm sorry for the way I treated my children. And some of your children are going to get on your knees and say, Lord, I'm sorry for the way I treated my father. But today, you've poured in salt. And I'm going to live the healed life. No longer angry, bitter, resentful. Because this is the day of Elijah. These are the days. Behold, I will send Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the hearts of the children to the fathers. And the heart of the children to the... And the heart of the fathers to the children. And the heart of the children to their fathers. Lest I come and smite them with a curse. This is a day of heart to heart change. This is the day where hearts are turning. Curse. And curses are being broken. It's a time where fathers will take the initiative to call because you're a salt man. It's a time where children will turn their hearts to their fathers. It's a time when heart and heart will become renewed in reunion of love of father and children. It's a time to get the Holy Spirit, the true salt in your lives. So would you lift your hands right where you are? Come on, every daddy. If we had an altar call today, I know I would see daddies down these aisles with tears in your eyes. Lift your hands, Father. Lift your hands right where you are. Eternal God, I pray for every man today. The honor of fathering is upon many who are hearing. Will you help them today to live out the full significance and worth of fatherhood? Lord, many of us are imperfect. All of us are imperfect made all kinds of mistakes but I'm praying that today would be a day where you sprinkle salt in the head of the source of our lives and our marriages in our minds and our concepts because we recognize we can't do it without you so I pray for every hurting daddy fathers in prison fathers in hospitals fathers in homes lonely by themselves today fathers who are struggling and suffering from rejection because they were never fathered nor loved fathers who tried their best but had a broken limp that made them not walk straight and had, my God, rejection issues that they couldn't walk straight. Holy Ghost, will you draw them to you? Our Father, Abba, will you welcome them in your love today and cause men now to rise up to the place of salt men, salt of the earth. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Why don't someone give God praise on the chat? If the Lord has been dealing with your heart and if you want to be baptized today, if you want to come and get right with the Lord, please just call the church, call our number. We're here today. We'll baptize you today. Numbers will be on the screen or check it on the line. Or if you need salvation, just go to our contact page and we'll be glad to follow up with you. But thank you for tuning in. And I'd like to say if you have not yet given, come on. If we share truth, spiritual truth with you, Bible says it's a small thing for you to give. So tithe and give a generous offering today sow a seed for new beginnings and let's shout and celebrate the days of Elijah he's a good good father sing oh yes he's a good father come on put your trust in Jesus we want to know how this message has affected you God bless you we are a rising global church with a deep care for individuals and the needs of our community your generous financial support and gifts in kind help us extend needed help to families locally and globally. From food on tables, support to missionaries, and humanitarian relief. With more to build and more people to minister to and help in times of need, your giving will make the difference for them and for you. Here at APC, we understand that our community is our priority and God promises 
that he will open the floodgates of heaven and pour out his blessings on you. So on behalf of those you help, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you for your, your continued, continued support. If you'd like to give to APC, you can do so at apcpickering.com forward slash give. Thank you and God bless you.